Welcome to Skyline Summer Sessions. My name is Dwayne Natwick, and I'm here today with Richard Hooper from Pixel Robots. Good morning, Richard. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and what you're going to be talking about with us today. Yeah, so um, I'm Richard Hooper for Pixel Robots, as some people may know me. Um, currently, I'm a head of systems uh, company in the UK where I look after all the Azure uh, infrastructure, has, has everything to do with Azure, um, designer systems, even look after the desktop computers, literally the whole breadth of the IT field down to me. You're the, you're the man then, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> all right. And what topic are you going to be sharing with us today? So today I'm going to talk about AKS and sort of our, our journey to AKS and why we're using it, some of the benefits of AKS, um, that kind of stuff. All right. Yeah, uh, AKS seems to be a real hot topic lately. Uh, can you explain why that is? So a lot of people jumped on the sort of microservices bandwagon. It became like a fad at the beginning of a, a like last year or something. Uh, but AKS is like Microsoft's version of Kubernetes. It's a managed service. Um, so basically Microsoft create the sort of master node and whole uh, Kubernetes cluster. They manage it all for you for free as well. So that's quite a cool benefit. Um, so you don't have to worry about any of the configuration of etcd, Kubernetes or anything. You just say to Microsoft, I want an Azure cluster. A few minutes later, say six or so minutes, sometimes 10, depending on how busy it is, you've got a cluster and you can start using it. Another cool benefit of the um, AKS platform is its integration with Microsoft uh, Azure AD. So you can actually utilize your on-prem, which is synchronized up to your Azure AD resource um, users and groups to actually control your access to your AKS cluster, which is you know, really cool. And uh, I think it's the only um, Kubernetes cluster service uh, that integrates with Azure AD uh, out of the box in a way. Um, it also integrates nicely with Azure Monitor to help you monitor it so you don't have to use Prometheus. But if you wanted to use Prometheus, it has the option for that as well. And you get the benefit of Azure Advisor. So Microsoft utilizes like thousands of their enterprise customers' knowledge into Azure Advisor. So if you're, it sort of personalizes it to your AKS cluster, so it scans it over and says, oh, you're not doing this quite right. Maybe try doing this. And then, you know, it could help us become more secure, have better scaling, you know, even improve costs. So that's some cool benefits you get with AKS. That's yeah, that's really cool. Uh, the the AD and having that identity protection is definitely an important thing uh, for enterprise organizations. Can you expand a little bit more about the uh, any th additional security uh, capabilities that come along with AKS? Yeah. So um, as I said, with the Azure AD, you get that, um, and because it is Kubernetes, you you get all the benefits of the, the add-ons you can get. Um, it can integrate nicely with every Azure service. You also get um, pod identities, so you can actually put your identities inside the pods and then talk to your Azure resources nice and securely. So that's really cool. Um, something I need to look further into um, myself. Not quite there yet, but we're, we're getting there slowly. So much to learn. Well, great. I, I believe, uh, Richard, that you've got a demo to show us on AKS. You want to take us away on that one? Yeah. Yeah. So the demo is just going to be basically creating a simple AKS cluster um, and uh, basically installing a sample application. So let me just share my screen. Cool. So you should see my screen. Um, and All I've got is a terminal. So this is using Windows Terminal. Um, so first off, we're going to create... Um, an Azure resource group because everything in Azure needs to go in a resource group. So we're just going to use the AZ group create command, give it a name of Skylines AKS cluster, and going to use a location East US because it always has resources. So uh, we just basically use that command to create the resource group, which we have here. Uh, and then we're going to use an AZ AKS create command to actually create the cluster. So I'm just going to paste that in there because I've got it in another window. You don't want to watch me type in. It's a mess. Um, so we're going to use the AZ AKS create command. We're going to point it to the new resource group we just created. 
I'm going to give the cluster a name of skylines-aks-cluster just to match the resource group to make it easier. We're going to use two nodes. So a node is somewhere where the pods can run on. It's always recommended to use at least two you know, for redundancy in that. And we're going to let um, Azure to generate our SSH keys. So I'm just going to run that. That's going uh, to take... I'm oh, sorry, sorry Richard. Uh, you're uh, using uh, CLI as your, as your language to launch these, correct? Yes, yes, correct, there, yeah. I believe there are other ways to create AKS clusters within Azure as well, correct? You can use the portal, uh, which is nice and easy. I prefer the CLI because it's less clicking. Um, you can run a few commands and you've got it. Um, you can't currently use PowerShell. We're hoping that will come soon, um, but at the moment you can't. Uh, you could always use ARM templates, Terraform, and any other sort of infrastructure as code system. Um, where I work for our production systems, we use uh, ARM templates, and we can just basically spin up a whole cluster with every parameter we need. Um, we use Windows containers and everything like that. So we can get it all spun up. We can even put it into a pipeline for Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions, and then we can just basically reuse the same sort of template and create as many clusters as we, as we want, one for dev, test, production. Great. So this can, this can take quite a little while. So while it's um, doing its work and installing, I think I'm going to go through a sort of YAML file, which is what we use for in Kubernetes to actually um, deploy the application. So this is uh, my sample app. It's just basically a deployment, which is a Kubernetes sort of way of saying a collection of pods. Um, I'm just going to give it the name sample. And I'm going to have a label called sample as well. Nice and simple. We're going to just use one pod. So here you can change that to as many as you want in production, maybe two, you know, gives you a bit of redundancy in case something happens. Uh, you can put in here limits and stuff like CPU limits and, and memory limits. Always, always do that because that helps with your cluster auto scaling. Here we've got um, the image we're going to use. So this is off the Microsoft uh, container registry. Uh, it's using .NET Core, and it's just a sample application, which basically will bring up a website. Um, so that's basically the deployment. But then to publish it to the sort of the the internet or the world as such, we need to use a service. Um, and here we've got in the same YAML file the service. Um, we're basically going to use load balancer as a type. This will use Azure load balancer to you know, get a public IP address, and you hit the load balance IP, and then it pushes it down into your application. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just going to be on port 80 because, you know, it's just a demo. So the external port matches the internal port of the container. So let's have a little check on our container. Still currently building. Ah, there we go. Right. So that's the uh, cluster finished deploying. Um, as you can see here, we've got a nice sort of JSON output to do with the cluster. So we've got, if it's using Azure AD profiles, which is not how many maximum pods it can have, the orchestration version, so Kubernetes version 1.15.10. Basically all the standard stuff is using Azure virtual machine scale sets, which you know quite a lot about, Dwayne. Mm -hmm. um, the standard DSV2 VM, just a load of stuff, gives you the resource ID, fully qualified um, domain name of the cluster, and everything fun like that, um, even the IP addresses and everything. So um, let me go back to, let's get that out of the way. Um, let me go back to my command. So what we have to do now is um, install the sort of Azure CLI for Kubernetes. So we to do that, we uh, basically use the AZ AKS install CLI. Um, here it says I already have it, um, so I've got some permissions denied. Um, so what we can do, because we're in Linux, we can do sudo um, and then install it, put the password in. So sudo basically goes super user, so it's sort of like the Windows admin prompt uh, when you try and install a bit of software. So that's that all reinstalled. Now we have to use the az aks command uh, with the get credentials. Um, this basically is a command that goes and talks to your Kubernetes cluster and gets the kube config file. Um, so it basically puts a file on your desktop so kube ctl command knows where the cluster is and how to talk to it, get some sort of tokens and stuff. So we just got in here the resource group and the name of the cluster. So that's just um, updating that. 
I'm just going to click yes on overwrite because in my test earlier I was testing. And that's basically created the, well, updated the uh, kube config file in that location. Uh, so I can use the kube ctl get nodes command. So this is what we just installed with the az aks install cli command, uh, kube ctl. And I can see we've got these two um, nodes which we created. So they're three minutes old um, using version 1.15.10. Um, now in my directory, I have my YAML file that we went through earlier. So to deploy that, we're just going to use kubectl and apply dash f. Dash f is basically file, file name. and then yeah. the, the name of the file um, like this. Then goes and creates the two resources. So we've got um, the deployment and the service. Uh, what we can do, we can do a kubectl get pods, which will basically check the status of our pod at the moment. It's currently in the creating state. So what this does, it pulls down the container from the container registry and starts spinning it up. So because this is Linux node, it doesn't take long for it to uh, spin up. If it's Windows, you could be waiting 10 minutes, depending on which container you use. If it's a Windows core, it's like five gigs. So it's got to download a lot of stuff. So that's up and running. Um, so to find the external IP address of our application, which is through the service, we use kubectl get service and then the name of the service, which was sample. We get a nice external IP, um, IP address here, which we will copy. We will open up a new in private window. So we drag that over. Uh, basically, we just paste in the IP address. And once we hit that, it will take a little while as it's the first time loading, but we should see a nice sample page hopefully there it is so it's just a nice simple welcome to dotnet core tells you it's containerized it's using one cpu and it's sort of memory usages tells you it's running on linux um 1604 as the image and, and that's how basically it's so simple to create an aks cluster for testing playing around with learning and deploying an application um, I can show you the Azure portal as well. So if I go into the resource group Skylines AKS cluster, you've got a nice AKS cluster here. Um, and then here you've got basically everything you would normally have. If we enabled container monitoring or container insights, we can click on here to go see your log analytics workspace and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, you've got your node pools here and you can just do a lot of it through here, but uh, you know, most of it with Kubernetes, try and manage it through the command line. Um, yeah, and, and that's it, really. That's that's the basics of AKS and setting up a test cluster. Great. Now, you can run multiple applications on a cluster, correct? Yes, yes, you can, yeah. Yeah, so in fact, I, let me show you one of my um, test clusters I have for, I think it's this one, which has the Container Insights Monitor um, it on. So for example, I have all of these RabbitMQ clusters on there and, and some other um, sort of Voyager, which is um, an ingress controller, um, you know, HA proxy, some cert manager to give me sort of um, DNS, um, let's encrypt based um, certification for the ingress. Got my own custom ones, which we call RDE here. Um, yeah, so these are yeah, all the so containers lot, running yeah, on. A lot, a lot of applications running across those containers. Yeah. So, uh, so very powerful. Yeah, to you can even get the uh, live logs of the container. So I'm not sure. Yeah, there you go. There's some live logs of connection attempts on the rabbit stuff here and everything. Um, so you can, without having to go through the CLI, you can get quite a bit through the portal, but it's always better to go through CLI. Uh, you get a list of all your deployments and stuff like this. Yeah. What? Uh, so, you know, obviously you didn't just uh, just know uh, AKS clusters right off the bat. And what did you do? What would you use and what resources did you use to learn about AKS yeah. and how to deploy it? So um, when I first started learning, I, I basically read some books by a guy called Nigel Poulton. Um, he has a Docker book and a Kubernetes book. Um, and then from there, I started just sort of playing with it, reading the Microsoft docs and um, speaking to other people who are using Kubernetes, but not AKS, and then trying to find out what it can do. Just trying to reach out to as many people as I can on Twitter as well um, to sort of 
gain, gain their knowledge into my head and then pass the knowledge on again once I've understood it and, you know, use it here. Very cool. Um, so some, just some other, some other questions as we finish up here. Uh, everybody knows you a lot on social media as Pixel Robots. Uh, can you tell us about how the name and logo came about? Yeah, so um, when I was starting blogging, I was thinking of, I need a cool name because Richard Hooper, you know, there's um, in the UK, there's um, some guy who's already got my name and he's quite high up in the media industry, I think. So I couldn't use my name. So I thought hmm, maybe Pixel Pirate, but then I was a bit worried about um, like uh, people thinking I'm going to do pirated software or something. And yeah, I didn't want to of, that get, way. get some sort of hacker handle, right? <laughs> yeah. So I didn't want that. So I decided I want to use Pixel because every day we're looking at a screen, which is for the pixels. So, you know, it's related and the, the world's going down a route where robots are doing everything for us. You know, we've got RPA and everything like that. Um, so I thought, pixel robots that, that'll do and then the it's yellow because that's my favorite color um <laughs> nice and easy decision there and the bow tie below the logo is basically when i used to work in an environment where i needed suits and stuff i used to always wear a bow tie because ties you can get trapped in computers and get in the way so i thought i'm just gonna stick a bow tie on sort of stick it to the man a bit um and i used to always wear bow ties and so i thought i'd just incorporate that into the logo gotcha. yeah and that, that's it pretty much gotcha so the word on the streets you're a big disney fan yes so how many, very big how many times have you uh have you been to disney and what's what do you like best about disney so disney world i think i've been three times it was going to be four times i was going to be there last week and a week before but because of covid19 i wasn't able to um and disney paris i've been once hopefully next year it'll be california so as you can see i'm a big disney parks fan i love the movies also um my, my favorite bit is just the feeling you get when you're in the park and how everything is just perfect in a way you know it's like it just means you don't have to think about anything everything's catered for you. You just have to relax and enjoy, enjoy yourself. It's sort of, yeah, it just makes you feel good. Yes. Uh, my family's a big Disney, Disney family as well. So, uh, yeah. uh, can you tell us about some of the things that you, uh, that you get up to within the Azure community? I know you're a big part of that. Yeah. So, um, I try and sort of dip into a bit of everything. Um, so we've got the cloudfamily.info website where we're trying to sort of aggregate a lot of resources for learning um, as a sort of promoting other people's blogs, sessions and stuff like that. We, uh, well, myself and Gregor, we also do the um, Azure Advent Calendar. We started that last year and that took off crazy. Um, obviously getting involved with the Skyline Summer Sessions. I do a lot of blogging. I need to do more videos. Um, so hopefully this will give me the kick. I need to start doing more videos. I also run a sort of user group up in the Northeast. I need to sort of migrate that onto online due to what's happening, but I'm hoping we might be able to do some in-person meetups again soon, depending on how well it goes here in the UK. Um, but yeah, that's it pretty much. Great. Well, uh, thank you for your time today, Richard. As always, it's a pleasure chatting with you. I'm sure uh, everyone will learn from the chat today and get excited about AKS. Fingers crossed. Thanks for, thanks for having me.